The minimum marriage age nationally. Oh boy. In California, it's zero. You can marry right out of the womb. That just makes me feel like I am so far behind. I've had so long to get married. What's wrong with me? In places like Missouri, Oklahoma, Arkansas, Mississippi, and Louisiana, it's also zero. Zero in West Virginia, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Michigan. A lot of places where newborn babies can technically be married. Now the next youngest age is 14. Alaska and North Carolina are on that list. New Hampshire has 13 for females and 14 for males. Why? I have a lot of questions. They're the only state, in fact, that actually separates the genders like that. Texas, you have to be an emancipated minor. The hell does that mean? It's basically a legal adult before the age of 18. There's a couple other places with 15, 17, 18. Now, I know what you might be thinking. What's up with all these states with the age zero? I would propose you ask the opposite question, though. What I want to know is what happened in these states for them to have to impose a law like this? <laughs> because... <laughs> I don't know if I want to know. There was probably some 12-year-olds that wanted to get married and the state had to butt in and say, no, well, it was a 12-year-old and who knows what the other person's age was. I don't even know what to say. The many different license plates I saw on my two-day trip to Montenegro. First of all, this person was so diligent at looking at those license plates. This person found like almost every single European country in two days, along with license plates from Illinois, New Jersey, and New York. First of all, why? Who took their car to Montenegro? The number of license plates here that are shown is incredible. I mean, again, over a 48-hour period, and I'm assuming, you know, the person had to have slept for like eight hours during at least two of those days. Did they even get to enjoy their trip to Montenegro? Because it seems like they must have just been writing things down. One of the most amazing ones is the Kazakhstan license plate. What does that even look like? Oh, besides the 240p quality, that looks pretty cool. Really love this data, but I ask, you know, enjoy your vacation next time. Try, try to do that. The most watched animes in Europe. Oh god, I have to say this anime's name. Narat Naruto. 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 <laughs> Naruto. I don't know. I've heard it's been, I've heard it say, I've heard people say it so many different ways. Obviously, I've never watched that. Love this though. Like father, like son. Spain's favorite anime is Dragon Ball Z. I've always heard Mexico is obsessed with Dragon Ball Z. And apparently a lot of other South American countries are as well. Specifically, I should mention the Spanish speaking side, not Portuguese. I feel like this is a great time to mention something I just recently discovered here in Spain. Spain redubs so many different things. If Mexico did a dub, Spain will do their own, even though they speak the same language. And apparently you can include Dragon Ball Z in that too. There are two different Spanish dubs for this anime. I just, I don't really understand why. It'd be like if we here in America redubbed the Australian show Bluey in our own accent. Like, <laughs> why? Or something like Finding Nemo, we just can't have the Australian accent. Anyways, Germany, France, Italy, and Greece all enjoy One Piece. This great anime war continues. The male obesity rate projection in the year 2025. This is only two years away. So we Americans are the chubbiest. They are predicting nearly 50% of male population to be considered obese. I think it's actually around 45%, but we're still leading the world. Kind of surprised about this. Strangely, it seems like Saudi Arabia is not too far behind. Possibly Kuwait and Qatar as well. The UK might possibly be the biggest in Europe, but Hungary, weirdly, also is pretty high. There does seem to be a common thread with English-speaking countries. But then Mexico is kind of up there along with Argentina and Chile. On the opposite side of things, we have places like Vietnam that look like they're at like 0% or Vietnam very close to zero. It's probably not zero, but like two. China, Pakistan, Myanmar, Japan, they're all hovering around 10%. So is Indonesia and the Philippines. And honestly, I think this projection is only gonna grow. This is only 2025. What's gonna happen another 15 years? The world's most violent cities. You will notice a uh, geographical theme here. Now, to be honest, I thought there were a couple of Brazilian cities included in this list as well, but I guess not in this graph. Now, as someone who's been to Mexico four times in 2023, I don't think it's as bad. But, just like any time you're traveling, you need to exercise some caution. So far, I've only been to Cancun, Mexico City, Guadalajara, Puerto Vallarta, and I drove through Tijuana once. I feel like, just, just don't be dumb. Use common sense. You'll be alright. It's not that, it's... <laughs> Mexico has incredible places to visit. I will say, I have not been to New Orleans, though. But I've always wanted to visit for Mardi Gras. Is your currency worth more than one Robux? <laughs> I'm actually really surprised I was able to get through that the first time without laughing. So the US dollar is worth more than one Robux. So is the Mexican peso, so is the Canadian dollar. Most of Europe has currency that beats out the Robux. However, there's a large part of the world that does not. And a surprising one is the Japanese yen. Japan has like the third most powerful economy in the world. How did this happen? Like, come on, Japan, this is, this is crazy, this is crazy. Another notable country is South Korea. They're not in the top 10, but they're like, I think the 13th strongest economy. I'm not 
not super surprised to see Russia under the value of Robux. I mean, Russia's been having a tough time with their economy recently. The Indian rupee, large part of Africa, and like 50% of South America. Not super surprised because Venezuela has been dealing with some crazy inflation, and actually so has Argentina. Recent court filings have revealed that hundreds of Roblox users engage in money laundering through Robux. Oh, man. And I was focused on just finding my Roblox girlfriend. I had no idea this was going on. Roblox's revenue of $2.23 billion would rank them at 161st of all countries' economies. This is actually weird because I actually invested way too much money into Roblox. <laughs> in the stock market. I think I made Frank do that too. Uh, this is like the worst investment I've ever made. It started so high and then it just tanked. Yeah, I've lost 75% of everything I invested in Roblox. Is Robux the strongest economy in the gaming world? Because I always mention this, I know that the country of Venezuela still plays RuneScape. They grind for you in order to make money. That's how bad Venezuela is doing. There's more economic opportunity in this game than in Venezuela. What about um, V-Bucks? I mean, it wasn't that long ago where V-Bucks were actually more expensive than the Russian ruble as well. If only I could use game currency to pay for this. Gas prices in the United States. It is just so insane. I didn't realize it was all in the Pacific. So in the deep south, apparently gas prices are still at less than $3.50 a gallon. But in Hawaii, Alaska, Arizona, California, Nevada, Oregon, and Washington, it's all over $4.50. And I feel like it's been that way for years now. The transitional states are Utah, Idaho, and Montana. You know, you would think to counteract the high gas prices, we would have amazing public transit, right? <laughs> That's not the case. Like, you kind of have to give the deep south low gas prices to do anywhere to get anywhere you gotta drive and they gotta drive far but like you would think we'd have like a nice subway or tram to take no nope. most u.s states though are hovering around 350 to four dollars geez california is actually nearing six dollars meanwhile the state of louisiana is three dollars and forty cents i remember there was a time when california was at three dollars and forty cents it was just like 10 years ago actually it probably wasn't that it was like five years ago maybe still even this doesn't compare to the gas prices here in europe i'm saying about $7 for a US gallon in the UK. <sighs> Share of women who smoke in Europe. These are crazy high numbers, and I wouldn't believe it if I didn't witness it for myself. Serbia is the big one, 41%. But of course, my eyes immediately went to France at 33. A third of all women are smoking. You do notice it. You can't not notice it. It's everywhere. Interesting, some of the lowest rates are in Ukraine and Moldova. Why is Sweden so high compared to all the other Nordic countries? This definitely seems to be a Balkan thing, except for Albania. They're like, no way. There's probably some history behind that. I have noticed a lot here in Spain as well. What's the U.S. rates? Apparently it's only 13%. Number of referendums held in each country. Interesting the U.K. has only had three, yet I think I know all of them. Remember, a referendum is a direct vote by the electorate on a proposal, law, or political issue. So it can pretty much be about anything. And apparently in Switzerland, they are a direct democracy. They've had almost 700 referendums. What are you guys even voting on that much? I like this comment. Should the door of the post office in the village be paid? painted red or green. I think that's what they're doing. There's a lot of places with just one, one throughout their entire history. I mean, Bosnia is not that old, neither is Czechia. Belgium, though, kind of surprised about that. Well, Finland has only had two. Crazy that Italy's in second place, yet it's still nowhere near Switzerland. Oh, actually, it's Liechtenstein in second place at 108. How to survive inside of a plummeting elevator. If there's a handrail, use it to hold yourself against the wall, keeping your knees bent to help absorb the impact. This dude here is ready. If there's no handrail, lie on the floor of the elevator on your back protecting your head and your face with your arms. Spreading your body out on the ground will help minimize the overall impact force on any one point in your body. Once the elevator has stopped, use the emergency call button to... Uh, are you really going to be able to stand up after this? There's no way. There's no way. If you're stuck, look for a thin piece of metal to pry open the door and escape. Don't try to climb out of the top of the elevator where the electrical equipment puts you at risk of getting electrocuted. I wouldn't have thought of that. But is this really going to open up into anything? Bro, I'm just going to time it perfectly where when we hit the ground, I jump up. So it's just going to be like... Because I'm built different. No, apparently they say not to do this. They, they really do tell you to just lay on the ground. That just feels like it goes against every single natural instinct. <laughs> There's so many, there's so many pictures telling you not to do what I just suggested. Apparently, it is possible to survive this situation, but you will probably get injured, at the very least. The average time for an English speaker in full time learning to reach general professional proficiency, whatever that means. Apparently, it's only supposed to take you 24 to 30 weeks to learn all of these languages. Again, if you're coming from English. So pretty much all of the Romance languages, Portuguese, Romanian, Spanish, uh, Italian, even French, as well as Danish, Dutch, uh, Norwegian, Swedish, 24 
to 30 weeks. That, I don't know. That's like half a year. It does say full time. So does that mean like 40 hours a week? It would take 36 weeks though to learn German, Haitian Creole, Indonesian, Malayan, Swahili. Hmm, I might need to pick that up. It would take 44 weeks or nearing a full year to learn all these languages. Some big ones being Hindi, Bengali, Russian, Urdu. Those are some of the big ones. Tajik, uh, Tagalog from the Philippines, Polish. I think a big thing that helps with these languages is there's a lot of shared words. Like if you know English, you can make out a lot of these other words here. And there's probably a lot less crossover, especially just considering geography speaking. It's not like the UK where English came from uh, is very close to Mongolia. They're not going to have much crossover. Surprised that Hungarian isn't at the bottom of the list. Finally, 88 weeks to learn Arabic, Cantonese, Japanese, Korean, and Mandarin. Again, purely based off of geography, you can kind of see how this all relates. Adopted old world languages. There's way more possibility for crossover in certain words and phrases if you're next to each other. And on the opposite side of things, there's way less of that chance if you're far away, obviously. Historically, uh, English and Chinese didn't have a lot of mixture throughout the centuries. If anything, nowadays, all the languages are beginning to kind of come together because of the internet and things like that. How do you get a job learning a language, though? 40 hours a week? And big thanks to my patrons. Destiny Drew Drew Ducker, Ducker 9, the Sebi, if you hear Subscribe this, I love to Drew you. Now. I am the kid of Fat Norwal, Carmel S, no Inquisitor Zarius, Marino is the best AI. girl, Luxembourg, five six ten, Robert. E, Rye the, pie, the Great Ralphie, the Mexican the Wicked Hamster, John Denver, Glad and Dad, Jack Traven's annoying friend. And why am I doing this?